Christmas, everybody. Merry Christmas. Let's stand together and uh, <coughs> sing some songs about Jesus being born.
love incarnate, love divine. Star and angels gave the sign. Bow to babe on bended knee. The Savior of humanity. Unto us a child is born. He shall reign forevermore. No. tonight we come in your name we gather together and we bring grateful hearts we're so thankful that you left the majesty of heaven and that you restricted yourself to the things of this world and you became a man and you lived your life fully man but yet fully God and we don't quite understand that but we trust you and we know we know the truth, and your truth comes from your word. And Lord, we're just so grateful today. We just worship you as our Lord and Master. 
and we praise you tonight. We gather together with grateful hearts, and we just worship and praise you, and thank you for this night. In Jesus' name. All right, we're going to do that again. All right, let's, let's pretend you just didn't stand at line in Macy's for 10 hours to get up to there to like a 16-year-old on her 12th hour shift to have that said to you. Let's try it again. Merry Christmas. All right, praise the Lord. It's snowing outside. Tomorrow we celebrate the birth of our Savior. This is a, this is a good night. I get to wear my snow boots to church. First time ever. This is, this is a good night. Um, man, I hope you're happy to be here. I, I told my wife just on the drive here, I'm like, I bet there's 10 people here tonight. Like, and, and it's not the case, man. People showed up to celebrate Christmas. I'm, I'm pretty pumped, pumped about that. As I was thinking about Christmas and just thinking about tonight and the fact that it's snowing and tomorrow's going to most likely be a really white Christmas for all of us, it just makes me happy. And I was thinking as I was getting ready to share tonight just about some of the emotions around Christmas and some of the marketed emotions and what those are like. And like we, we know those, right? They're on our coffee cups at Starbucks and at Dutch Bros. They're on people's sweaters and, and different, different mugs at home. It's like Mary and, and, and joy and peace and all sorts of like glad tidings and merry and bright. My, my daughter has a pair of pajamas that say merry and bright. They're her Christmas jammies. And, and so we're, we're used to these emotions of like, man, it's just all about presents and gifts and family and all these good times we get to celebrate. And what a joyful season. And I agree, it can be all of those things. And, and at moments, I've definitely said that, yes, that was a, a really happy moment. That was a really glad moment. Man, I felt merry and bright during this particular thing. But if we look at actual just data, and maybe this doesn't align with your typical Christmas Eve service, so this bums you out a little bit. I'm just sorry. But if you look at data, actually 45% of people really struggle with extra stress and anxiety and depression between Thanksgiving and New Year's. So let's just be real about that. Actually, about two-thirds of people say they could actually just skip, wish they could just skip over the holidays because of all the extra stress that it causes. And when I was looking at that report, that was actually pre-COVID, right? So if we add on all the other stuff that we're dealing with right now before that, I would imagine those numbers would even go up. They didn't have to deal with Omicron and more shutdowns and flights getting canceled because of this or that. Like, like we are living in a unique time when I just feel like there's a lot of mental stuff going on specifically around the holidays. And as I was thinking about that, like what, what like commerce tries to market to us versus what reality is like and what, the, what our experiences are like around Christmas with, with, with family coming to town. And man, usually you're working late, you're trying to get a lot done before the end of the year and there's just all this extra stuff. There's more traffic, there's longer lines. Uncle Eddie is coming to town where that stresses us all out. We all have our own Uncle Eddie. Like we gotta, it just, it just kind of builds up. And I was thinking about that, and I've, I've been reading through the dis- different gospel accounts of the incarnation, um, and, 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 and something struck me. And as, as I was reading through specifically Matthew and Luke's account, and I was just like, man, I, there's something unique about these. And I, as I was kind of zeroing in on it, I was like, I'm, I'm just going to make a list of the emotions that the Bible specifically mentions. Just emotions. I'm going to take the narrative out of it. I'm going to take all the other words. I'm just going to distill this down to the emotions given. I want to read you the emotions of, of first century Bethlehem. Are you guys ready for this? These are, the, these are the emotions in Matthew. Disgrace, disturbed, mourning, and afraid. If we jump over to Luke's gospel account, they're a little bit brighter, but not much. He says, greatly troubled, joy, awe, terrified, and marveled. Not totally different than what I think a lot of people are feeling today. Terrified, afraid, greatly troubled. So I was thinking about that. One of my favorite Christmas hymns came to mind. I'm going to give you a little bit of backstory on this hymn. It was written in 1963 in the midst of the Civil War. It was written in Massachusetts by a father that had just gone to Washington, D.C. to pick up his borderline paralyzed son who had just been shot in the spine in a skirmish in, in the Civil War. And he, he had brought him back to his house, and, and just down the cobble road there in Massachusetts, he heard bells ringing in a tower. This guy was, his name was, was Henry Longfellow. 
And he sat down that day. He reminisced over the last couple years of what that had been like in their country with brother turning against brother and father against son and family against family. He remembered his wife dying just three years earlier. She died in a fire where he actually became very scarred and was handicapped because of that. And there he was with his son trying to nurse him back to health in the midst of just a tore up country. And, and as I read through, through this carol for you guys, man, I hope you can put yourself in a position of Henry, Henry Longfellow because the emotions that he is going to describe, I don't think are entirely different from what first century Bethlehem was like. I don't think it was, it was, it was pretty fitting for what mid 18th or 19th century civil war time was like. And I think they're going to resonate with your heart the way they resonated with my heart as well. So here's the lyrics to this Christmas tune. I heard the bells on Christmas day. I heard the bells on Christmas Day, their old familiar, familiar carols play, and wild and sweet the words repeat of peace on earth, goodwill to men. And thought how, as the day had come, the belfries of all Christendom had rolled along the unbroken song of peace on earth, goodwill to men. Till ringing, singing on its way, the world revolved from night to day, a voice, a chime, a chant sublime, of peace on earth, goodwill to men. Then from each black, accursed mouth, the cannon run, thundered from the south, and with the sound, the carols drowned, of peace on earth, goodwill to men. It was as if an earthquake rent the hearthstones of a continent, and made forlorn the households born of peace on earth, goodwill to men. And in despair I bowed my head. There is no peace, peace on earth, I said, for hate is strong and mocks the song of peace on earth, goodwill to men. Then pealed the bells more loud and deep. God is not dead, nor doth he sleep. The wrong shall fail, the right prevail with peace on earth, goodwill to men. So I, as I read through that hymn, I also thought about the responses in the gospel accounts. As, as we understand the emotions the people were feeling that day, man, the angels come and they bear witness to the response we should have. And in Matthew, the, the, the response was, do not be afraid. In Luke's account, they say twice, do not be afraid. Do not be afraid. And then they, and then they, and then they call to the shepherds and say, man, we bring you good news of great joy that will be for all the people. And how important for us is it to remember that? that we're not to be afraid, that there is good news of great joy that'll be for all the people. And that's that, that, that we celebrate in the city of David, a Savior was born, is Christ our Lord. And he wasn't just born this cute little baby. I know some of you grandma types like, you love your little babies. But he grew up into a man, he was a perfect man. And the birth points to the death. We know that Jesus died on the cross and that he rose again. And we know from the Gospel of John, that's a little bit different account. We just talked about that this last Sunday, is that he came and he bore witness and he came to bring truth and grace to this world. We know from gospels, the Gospel account of John that, that condemnation we were already under. He didn't come to bring condemnation. He came to bring grace, grace and truth. And we see that fully displayed at the cross and the fact that he rose again. And here's what I want us to remember. As we know that he rose again, as he was leaving, he promised us something. He said, I will return. I'm coming back. So the Advent we have all been celebrating for the last four weeks is not the only Advent. It's not the only coming we get to look forward to, that there is an Advent that is still yet to come. He's not coming as a baby next time. As you guys leave tonight, I want to give you good news of great joy. I'm going to turn to Revelation chapter 19. I know Revelation isn't normally a Christmas Eve kind of passage, but Revelation 19, verse 11. I saw heaven standing open, and there before me was a white horse whose rider is called Faithful and True. With justice he judges and makes war. His eyes are like blazing fire, and on his head are many crowns. He has written a name... He has a name written on him that no one knows but himself. He is dressed in a robe dipped in blood, and his name is the Word of God. Does that sound like John to you? The Word became flesh. Verse 14, the armies of heaven were following him and riding on white horses and dressed in fine linen, white and clean. 
Out of his mouth comes a sharp sword with which to strike down the nations. He will rule them with an iron scepter. He treads the winepress of the fury of the wrath of God Almighty. And on his robe and on his thigh, he has the name written, King of Kings and Lord of Lords. Man, that is good news of great joy, that we worship a king who is coming back again, whose advent we do get to look forward to. And here's the, man, it just keeps getting better. If I turn over to Revelation 21, I'm just going to read the first three verses in Revelation 21. Then I saw a new heaven and a new earth. For the first heaven and the first earth had passed away. There was no longer any sea. I saw the holy city, the new Jerusalem coming down out of heaven from God, prepared as a bride, beautifully dressed for her husband. And I heard a loud voice from the throne saying, Now the dwelling of God is with men and he will live with them. They will be his people and God himself will be with them and their God. The dwelling of God will be with his people. Man, are you hearing the gospel of John here? That the word became flesh and tabernacle dwelt with us? This is good news. This should give us joy. This doesn't mean that depression, anxiety, and stress will cease. This means that our joy is rooted in something much bigger than our current emotions. This is much bigger than the presence we're going to have tomorrow or the disagreement we're going to have with someone politically around the dinner table tomorrow. This is bigger than our health impacts. This is bigger than COVID. This is bigger than the government. This is big stuff. This is good news that, that transcends the stuff that's going on right now. Because the little baby grew up and died for us. And he's coming back again as King of Kings and Lord of Lords. And that's what we get to celebrate tomorrow. That's what we get to celebrate tonight. All right? Let's pray. Jesus, we just give you praise. We give you praise that for some reason that just baffles me, you left heaven to come to earth, to, to take on the flesh of a man. Lord, we praise you for that. We praise you for your life and that you went to the cross for us and that you died and that you rose again. And Lord, that we get to look forward to you coming back again someday. May we root our joy and our hope in that and not in the situations of the day. We just give you praise, Jesus, in your name. Amen. Amen. Let's stand and continue worshiping our hopefully soon coming king. Mm. Mm-hmm.
tender and mild. Sleep in heavenly peace. Sleep in heavenly peace. Jesus, we praise you for the baby that you came as. And we praise you for the cross that you died on. We praise you that you rose from the grave and you ascended to the Father. But Lord, we look forward to you coming again on your white horse as the King of kings and the Lord of lords. And may that just give us a joy that wells in up, up in us tonight, tomorrow, throughout this next year. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Merry Christmas, everybody. God bless you.